Hi everyone, welcome back. So during my break, I accumulated a lot of new products and I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on them today. Most of these aren't going to be a first impressions. I've actually been trying a lot of these out, so I'll be able to give you more information on my experiences with them so far. Before we get started, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. I'm starting with this. This is the First Aid Beauty Bronzing Glow Drops with Niacinamide. I finally get it. Lots of brands have this type of product these days, but I love how it's just instant sun, instant vitamin D placebo effect for my brain. There's a few things I really love about this product. First of all, it's from First Aid Beauty, one of my favorite skincare brands, and I love their niacinamide, so that's what grasped my interest in these in the first place. Secondly, I've tried many of like these bronzing drop products, but a lot of them apply very patchy, or they sink right into my pores and make my skin look dirty, which that doesn't happen with this one at all. Um, and it also is just like an immediate mood booster and it makes my brain very happy. <laughs> and everything I tried on top of this hasn't made it pill. So, so far it's going really well. I've had to keep this next product a secret for a while. This is the new Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. I worked with them on a little campaign on TikTok, but they sent it to me beforehand so I could try it out, see if I actually like it. And oh boy, do I. It's super, super blurring. It's a little bit different than what I usually gravitate towards, but it's really good. So it's cool. It's like a three in one type of product. First of all, it's a foundation. It has a niacinamide serum in it, and it also has a built in setting powder, which is amazing for us who have oily or combination skin types. What made me fall in love with this first was how blurring it is on my skin. Like it actually looks like a blurring filter. It's insane. You can just just see how smoothing it is on my skin and it lasts throughout the day like crazy. So you can see it has like a nice velvety softening effect. Of course it's appearing a little bit more glowy today due to the bronzing drops but I think this finish is gorgeous. One thing about the face bond foundation is you have to work a little more quickly. You still have a lot of work time. You just have to be a little more hasty with it because you don't want the setting powder to kick in halfway through your application or else it looks patchy but if you're Vigilant with your application, it's super, super smoothing. So now for concealer, I have a new one. This is going to be my first time trying it. It's the new Say Slip Tint Concealer. Just judging by my past experiences with Say's complexion products, I don't have the most hope for this one. I really dislike the Hydra Beam and like their other foundations and such, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So I have the shade five here. Oh shoot, I wanted to brush up on the differences between this one and their other concealer they already had. I'll do that once I blend this out. Well, very quick to blend out. I would say it gives more of like a medium to full coverage. Like there's a little bit of a hint of my under eye still. I'm just going to add a little more right here. Immediately, very, very seamless. A nice little glow to my under eye. It doesn't seem to be overly hydrating or dehydrating. We'll see how that settles in a little bit, but I just want to brush up on What's the difference? Oh wow, so this product also has niacinamide, so we're three for three in today's video so far. It's uh, niacinamide's popping these days. It's the new hyaluronic acid. Okay, so for the Hydra Beam concealer, which was the first concealer they offered, it's described as a hydrating and concealing under eye brightener with light coverage that immediately awakens the eye area and is clinically proven to eliminate and hydrate over time. And this new one is more like a classic concealer like we're used to seeing. It's described as a lightweight, non-comedogenic concealer with a natural radiant medium coverage clinically proven to wear 12 hours smooth and hydrate skin. So that's more up my alley, if we're being honest. I'm not going to set my under eyes quite yet. I wanna go on to blush and highlighter and all that because those happen to be all creams. I'm going to be trying out this new Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Bronzer, and I have the shade 110 Hey Honey. And I'm going to apply it with my Rose Ink Number no. 3 brush. This kind of looks like the makeup by Mario face balm that I like, like just 
the vibe I'm getting from it right now. So, and this is my favorite brush to apply with. The Makeup by Mario one. I haven't tried this one yet, so this is also a first impressions. Okay, it's not really like the Makeup by Mario, but it does blend out really nicely. As creams go, it's not as balmy and creamy and slippy like the Makeup by Mario. That's not one of their claims at all. It was just the vibe I was getting, so I completely made that up. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to switch up my lighting a little bit. The natural light has changed. It was overcast, now it's super sunny, so I feel like not getting a super accurate representation on my monitor here. Oh, one second. <laughs> okay, this is better. See, it's like a little bit orangey yellow, which I do feel nice and bronzed, but it's just not quite there for me. The product itself feels really nice. Maybe another shade from the line would have worked better. Maybe Spilling T120. I feel like it'd be just dark, but... So that's Spilling T. Mm, that's even more orangey and yellowier. <laughs> This is the one I went in with, so I actually prefer that one over this. Formula, good. Color for me, personally, not there. Now for highlight, I've been beyond excited for this line. I, when I first saw them online, I was like, oh my God, I need all of them. I saw them at Sephora. They weren't available to purchase, but they had their little display up. I s stood there for like probably a good 20 minutes just watching them being in awe of them, and I was like asking the employees, do you happen to have these in the mystical back room? <laughs> like, please, I need them. And then I came home to a package of all of them from Dior, and I was like, what? I could not believe the timing of it all. I, <laughs> yeah. So these are the Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. Look at the colors. Are you kidding? So when I first saw these online, I was most excited for this color right here, rosy and the pink one. I was like, how cute would this be as a blush and highlight moment? I'm going to have to try that. And I would also like to attempt to bronze with this. We'll see how that goes. I don't know about that, but how freaking cute. I actually wore this pink one on my birthday this past weekend and it was really cute, but I quickly swatched them all so you can see what they look like. Obviously this isn't the most accurate representation, but you can get a feel for the tone against my skin tone. So right here we have pearly, pink, gold, rosy, peachy, and bronze. I mean like look at that. I'll use this as a blush moment in an upcoming video because there's another blush I wanted to highlight in today's video, but I think it'll be a cute like spring moment if I mix it in with this which I'll save for a different day. I got lots to catch up on. I'm like a little overwhelmed with all the fun things. I'm going to use pink again today. And these are like the perfect kind of sheen for my tastes. It's not super, super glittery. Actually, hold that statement because the white one, pearly, is quite a bit more glittery in comparison to all the others, but the rest are kind of like a nice satiny glow. Very sheer. When the light hits them, they're super, super stunning. Dior also came out with their own version of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I'll have to keep again for an upcoming vid. So stay tuned for all that goodness. And the blushes I wanted to highlight are the new LYS Higher Standard Cream Glow Blush Sticks. So they came out with a lot of shades and they're all very vibrant and gorgeous. I swatched them all on the back of my hand here. So in order, oops, I made a little smudge. Okay, from top to bottom, we have Courageous. Wow, I put these in the worst spot for me to read. Courageous, curvy, outgoing, bubbly, focused, elite, and unfazed. <laughs> but these are super, super pigmented, which is awesome because it then stretches across many skin tones. Um, I think, ooh, do I wanna go with elite or focused today? I'm feeling like I'm leaning towards focused because my ADHD ass needs it, okay? And I like to go about these the same way as I do with the Rare Beauty. I make a little puddle in my palm. I was going to take the lazy way out and not dirty another brush because I just washed them all, but I will. And I take some like this, pat off some of the excess, and then I go in. Thank you. 
And this is a Huda Beauty, Huda, and this is a face cheek color brush from Huda Beauty. And I take it right on top of the highlight just for like a lifted effect. And another reason why I take it over the highlight is because these basically have a built-in highlight in them. Like, look at that. Um, they are fairly pearly, but the pearl is very fine. So I think it would be flattering on many skin types and textures. Okay, gotta put the brush down before I go to blush land. To check in with the concealer, because I haven't set it yet, it hasn't creased much from being unset, especially in these little lines here. Like, of course, anything's going to crease in there, but it's not horrid. So now let's go ahead and set it. I'm going to set it with a powder I know and love, and today that is the Huda Beauty Cupcake Easy Bake Powder. And I've been holding off from setting my under eyes right away, just because sometimes I get like a weird edge or you know, if I do go to blush land and I add too much, it's easier to add a touch more concealer to take that down instead of being kind of stuck. I actually did that by accident the other day and I was like, hey, my makeup actually looks better this way. So implemented that. And while I'm here, I'm also going to use this to set my T-zone. I'm taking a second to do my brows and prime my eyes. So please enjoy the kitten intermission. I talked about the new Makeup by Mario palette in my last video, but I just wanted to reiterate how excited I am for it. This is what it looks like next to the original Warm Mattes, and here's the new one. So you can see, it's a lot cooler, a lot more neutral, which is more up my alley. I'm going to start with this shade right here, just kind of as my base color in my crease. Then I'll take a smaller brush and I'll grab this one down here, this one. And I'll start kind of sketching out a soft wing. Then I'll take a little mixture of this and then I'll go right over this. I'm going to add more depth right in here using that same mixture. Going again, going in again with this right on my lower lash line, leaving a gap. Good way to add under eye definition, especially if your eyes are feeling a little teary or watery, then they can pass without screwing up your eyeshadow look. <laughs> and I like the openness it adds to my eye looks. Just going to soften it out with that first shade I put in my crease. Now I'm going to take an even smaller brush and I'm going to take this dark brown right here. And I'm going to add even more depth right here, kind of on the bottom of my eyeliner right here. This is where I want the most sharpness and depth. Then I'll bring it towards my lashes. Taking that first crease shade again, I'm actually going to flick a more generous amount outwards just to contour and elongate just that much more. I'm going to take an angled brush, just any, and I'm going to take that deeper brown, not the deepest brown, but the one right next to it, this one in the corner. And I'm taking a touch of that and I'm going to shove it right in here to add, just to add a little bit more definition in the inner corner. Then I'll take a flat brush. This one's a Moda SMI shader. Um, most of the brushes I was just using are kind of discontinued, aside from the Smith ones. I was, the big one is a Smith 232, this flat one is a Smith 247, and this tiny, tiny blending brush is a Smith 233. The rest are discontinued, but you can find these very easily. They're quite common shapes. I want to try this shade right here. I want to see what this looks like on my lid. There's a lot of open it, but it's still brightening. I like it. I'm going to take this brightening shade and I'm going to use that as an inner corner highlight as well. I'm taking, and I'm taking a tiny bit of it just to brighten right here, right under my wing. And maybe just in the most center part right here. 
pigmented. Whoa. And here are the eyes all finished. I added some of my Cleo Kill Lash Mascara just to finish off the look. Um, just a very simple kind of soft glam, typical look for me. But these tones are perfect for every day and to suit whatever you want on your cheeks and your lips. Neutrals are the best. So now for lips, there have been a few lip launches I've been intrigued by. First off, Half Magic Beauty released three new shades in their glittery glosses, which I'll have to film like little swatching reels. I'll probably do one for each of these launches here. Whoops. But they came up with some funky shades, like this black, this gorgeous pearly pink, and this really rich deep brown. And here's the two previous colors, so Magic Brownie and Frosty Bitch. Let's try the pink one on for funsies, or let's just try on a few. I'll start with the black one, because I'm very curious. I feel a cat hair haunting my nose somewhere. Little trick, if you have a cat and you have a cat hair haunting your nose somewhere, tickling you, just brush a spoolie over it and it'll get it. Would be a vibe with a lip liner. <laughs> but it's nice to see that it's even. It doesn't super settle into any cracks on my lips, but a little bit, but not bad. Let's try the pink one now. Ooh, super frosty. I like that one. I see myself actually wearing that one with one of my favorite lip liners. It's cute. I like how there's like a little touch of a milky gloss in there. I also have the five new shades in the Patrick Tug glosses. So I'll save that for some different content because I feel like there's more of a demand on a review on the Huda Beauty Faux Filler glosses. And I have some thoughts. I've been trying these out for about a week now. And they're so-so. I feel like the TikTok reviews I've seen really hype these up. And I feel like they're just mediocre. Okay, so they're called full filler. They're supposed to like fill in all the lines on your lips and make your lips look very mirrored and glossy, which I would say is accurate for the clear one, which I'll just throw on right now. So here's this one on. You can see it, it does have like a very dewy look to it, very gorgeous. But now I'll try on a different color. I'll try on this pink called Sugar Baby. I do like the applicator because it does deposit a lot on your lips. You don't have to dip a few times, but can you see how it settled into every little crack of my lips? So unflattering and not cute. And I unfortunately found that that happens with quite a few of these shades. The one that I do enjoy is the shade called Posh. This one here, it's kind of mauvey. And this one feels very different in comparison to some of the other colors. This one's cute. And it doesn't do the weird settle thing. And it feels really nice and silky. I'm going for Anywhere Caffeine today. Maybe I'll try this one. I'll just try one more color. This is the shade Bombshell. This one's pretty cute, but all to say is I think these glosses are pretty mid. I think if you really want that like faux filler effect from a gloss, one of the best are still the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jellies. These are so filling, but they feel so softening and they don't feel like a thick layer on your lips at all. And the colored ones are so smooth and even in pigment, they're not going to look streaky or the, pigments, or the pigment is not going to fall into the cracks of your lips. And here is my makeup look for today. Now let's wrap up my thoughts on these newer products. So starting with my yes section, the First Aid Beauty Bronze and Glow Drops, really awesome. So if you love this kind of thing, maybe consider trying this one next. I think you'd really like it. And for the Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation, if you have a similar skin type to mine, Oily Combo, I think you're going to love this. The softening matte finish of this is stunning. It's not super dehydrating or unflattering. It's just really blurring and softening. It's amazing. And 
this has such a long wear time. It looks the same at the end of the day as it went on. It's incredible. The first time I tried this, I was like, this has potential to become one of my new go-tos and it so far has. Another big yes is the new Makeup by Mario palette. Is it the most snazzy, most exciting palette? No, but yes to me. I go wild for like a nice neutral palette like this and this has made me feel so excited to do my makeup and I'm so happy to have these beautiful neutrals in a formula that I love and trust. So happy. Another big yes is the LYS blush sticks. I think these are stunning, especially if you love like a creamy blush. Great. And as far as cream blush sticks go, these are very creamy, they're not waxy. They're just really soft and nice to work with. I don't know if other people feel the same way towards these as I do right now, but I am extremely excited about these. There's something that just ignites the most excitement from within. Like, I don't know what, what it is. Like, I feel like I've seen this tons of times before, but there's something about them that just get me going. <laughs> I just love them. So this is another product that I'm just enamored by. Now let's get into my maybes. This is a strong maybe. It performed really good today and I was feeling ready to write it off going into it, which isn't really fair to the concealer, but it blew away my expectations. I don't think that's how people say that. I think I made one mistake. I didn't flatten uh, the creases on this side, so I kind of set the creases in place on this side, but on this eye, it hasn't gone back into my little lines I have down here, and it looks really nice and even. And I loved how quick it was to apply this one. I'm going to have to go through a few more trials with it, but so far so good. The other complexion products from Say were a complete no for me right off the bat, but this one's a maybe. For the Milani bronzer, I think the formula is great. I just don't really love the specific tone on me, but I feel like it's grown on me since I finished my makeup. It's really nice and warming, which is what you want from a bronzer, but formula wise, really good. And I only have one no for you today. I feel like there are so many incredible glosses, especially coming out now, that these just are so mediocre. I do not recommend these. I think they're just too risky because I feel like they perform differently from shade to shade. And like, wh why? The House Labs glosses are far more superior to these and pretty much every other gloss I have in my collection. If you want to know what my favorite lip products are at the moment, I do have a video on all of them. I'll link that down below. But yeah, these are going to be forgotten within the month for me. And there we have it. That's going to be all from me. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments down below. And I'll have everything I used listed and linked in the description box down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.